other guys were about the movie, so we were just doing his slow off for the place. He's absolutely precious. He's absolutely precious. He doesn't like the manners minder, and I do think, I do think you've got to introduce that manners minder young, because part of the reason we had quit using it before was because they were scared of it. Cowardly things. You know, and when it would start making the noise, but I, you know, these younger ones don't really seem to be, you know, so I, I think the key is, and I'm not giving up on the manners minor, I told you that woman killed herself. Um, I, I think the key would really be, and this is what we need, maybe even get like the little jacks, I don't know if those work in there, Crystal can look it up. Uh, and then just start doing it with the puppies so they already got used to it when they were itty teeny tiny. Or I'm sure there's people, I mean, if I had nothing to do and just one puppy, you know, I would probably put all its food in there. And in fact, I think that that's what they recommend you do, but that, that's not realistic for your average pet owner. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to tell that guy with the educator thing, you know, that the treat method is, well, it's really the only method. And, you know, if you don't think people are on board with that, you might want to look into the treat industry. Because as far as I know, it's huge. Huge. And as far as I know, they're inventing new treats every day, all professing to help your dog learn faster and listen to you and love you more. All right, so what I'm doing with this dog, and I should really do it with the sound box, is really just a three-action three drill. Blue, heel. I held that pager down the whole time. When he jumped back up there, I didn't let it up, which was part of the reason he knew. In your place, now I'm letting it up right then. Without the manners minder, you do have to manually record them. That's why the rest of them are all going to learn the manners minder. They're all going to learn the manners minder, and they're all going to get automatic treats. Get a little forklift that lifts them around here. I've been threatening to invent that robot. I don't know if Crystal knows about that. The Killybot is this futuristic robot that you just hook the... And this is how sophisticated this thing is. You just... We pre-record the people's voices saying commands. And we work with them. We have like a special dialect coach that, you know, gets them to enunciate and say the commands and everything. We record that on the Killybot and then... Instead of being out here doing this, the Kellybot has a built-in camera, of course. <laughs> and it goes out here and it wheels up and down the driveway and it trains it. It does the pager, it does the, it knows how to do everything. And then it wheels them around the pond. It's got little, you know, its legs are like a little tank. No, 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 no. It's like that, uh, no, no, no. Its legs are like the, uh, the Lost in Space. Crystal probably doesn't know about that show. Mm. You never heard of that Lost in Space? They they remade it. They remade a movie of it with uh, um, Joey from Friends played the the role of the hmm. first lieutenant or whatever. You never heard of that? I mean, it sounds familiar. I don't know if I've seen it. <laughs> no, that's her state of mind. Lost in Space. That's why it's ringing a bell. All right, so look, I'm going to. <laughs> she's, she's, no, 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 not me, not me. All right, so I'm going to bring him back. So what I've taught this dog in, there was no there was no physical cue right there, is really never to go on this side of me. And, and there are people that teach him to go around behind you to return to heel. But I'll tell you what, I don't like that. Blue heel, it's better they always stay on this side. Oh, he's absolutely perfect. Anyway, Jim and Philip developed this, and all dog training is an extension of one of these three behaviors. In your place, I'm going to be all excited and I just get very defeated because I know, yeah, I, I did, the most trained dogs are really trained with just verbal commands, all these hand signals, and I'm just not a big believer. You barely get people to blurt out the command, much less some crazy hand signal. You know, and when you're talking about these hand signals, 
I don't ever hear about the bigger picture, you know, of, you know, making sure the dog's looking at you, because if it's not, I can tell you how well hands are those All right, so look, I've got, I'm, I'm in neutral. I'm not moving at all. He's, he's kind of watching me, but he's not. Well, that's what we can put on Bluebee's next uh, thing. We can just we can hire a butler for it. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a butler. Down. Ideally, what you would have, though, and, and I think I now I gotta go back on Jim and Phyllis's thing. And if you guys, if, if anybody has not read, I mean, recommended reading for any call e collar trainer is Dr. Tortora's book. And I'm gonna make another effort to get in touch with Dr. Tortora. Um, and you know, Tritronics Retriever Training, which I told that Greg, that's the largest selling retriever training book of all time. As far as I know, I can look it up, but uh, that book alone spawned a whole generation of electronic collar trainers. And if somebody wants to say that Jim and Phyllis didn't invent that, then I would say to them, show me something prior to that book being published in writing that describes that methodology, because I don't think you will. Blue, heel, ideally you would, you know, and some people do it, good. I gotta make sure I push him back, too. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's what we need, Crystal. We need, uh, like, a pitcher's mount. Because ideally the handler would be standing on a stationary platform and then in. Absolutely perfect. Bye, guys.